Hey guys, my name is Massimo and I have a new mod for the Mustang today. I picked up some Fortune Auto coilovers. So I'm super excited to install these. The few reasons I picked up these, um, they're going to improve handling dramatically on stuff like the track and canyons and things like that. And it's going to be adjustable ride height now. So instead of my old setup, which you're gonna see in a couple minutes here, these are going to be able to be adjusting the ride height if I want to go higher or lower with the car. So in the box, you have some spanner wrenches with your custom certificate of assembly signed by whoever built the coilovers. All of Fortune Auto's coilovers are handmade by them, which is really cool. Um, and then starting off in the box here, we have the front coilovers. So these are for the front. This is the coil sitting on top of the threaded shock body. Um, we have some camber adjustment at the top, some damping control, uh, compression and rebound are inside of the same damping control and then obviously adjustable ride height at the bottom here where you could thread the shock body in or out to get that ride height higher or lower. And with the backs we're actually going to have a little bit of a different setup. The shock is actually going to be separate from the spring. The Mustangs, at least in this generation, the S197, run a divorced rear setup where the spring is sitting on the chassis and the shock is separate from the actual spring. So here are the rears here, as you can see, it is just the shock, but you still have adjustable ride height on the spring and the spring perch. And then you match the shock to whatever ride height you want the spring to go to. But we're going to talk about that, all of that more when we do the installation on the actual car. And the last thing you really get in the box is some sway bar M links for the front end. And that's really all you get with the coilovers. That is all you really need to install them. So we're going to remove all of this and we're going to go to the car and start on the process. So I've got the car all jacked up behind me. We're gonna start taking the old suspension off and putting the new ones on. The old suspension setup is Coney Sport, Coney Yellows. They're adjustable with damping and I had the Steeda Ultralight Springs on there. They were also a linear spring and I love the setup, which is obviously you can't go wrong with coilovers. Way better handling and more comfort and obviously ride height adjustment. So that's the reasons I'm going with coilovers. Can't wait to get started here. Let's get at it. So we took the old shock out of the car and we have the new Fortune Auto set up here. What I ended up doing is I took both out of the box. That way we can make sure they're both the same length because you do want both shocks, left and right driver and passenger side of the car to be the exact same length side by side. The rear is the same thing. You're gonna want them to be side by side the same length. Now these guys, we measured them out with the measuring tape. They weigh about 20, or they, the length is about 22 and three quarters inch in length. And uh, I did the same thing. I measured Fortune Autos to be around the same, but I ended up compressing it about a half inch because I do want the car to sit about a half inch lower. Now, another thing I noticed that was really, really cool is the weight difference in the Fortune Autos is insane. They are so much lighter than the old Coney's. If you're looking for weight reduction, coilovers is a great way to go. If you have the stock shocks and struts or anything like Coney's, get some coilovers. That is going to be a great way to reduce weight in all four corners of the car. Anyways, we're going to drop this Fortune Auto coilover in the car and uh, see how it looks and see how it's set up. So we were able to get the coilover all set in place here and in the car, but the only thing is, is we forgot to set the camber. And so unfortunately the camber, if you see right in there, the camber is right under the top hatch there and it is unable to be reached while the coilover is on the car. Most cars do have this top hat cut out enough where you can adjust the camber while it's on the car. But unfortunately, the Mustangs are not cut out enough for the Fortune Auto coilovers. So that being said, before you put the coilovers in the car, make sure your camber adjustments on the top here are set and ready to go. And all those Allen keys are locked in place before the coilover is installed. Or you can drill the top hat out here. Obviously, probably not the most ideal solution, but if you wanted to do that, it is possible. So I got the GoPro on now. What we did do is we did drill out the shock towers so you can actually access the camber adjustment in each spot. Um, that way I don't have to take out the whole coilover every time I'm trying to do camber. So we have this one all tied in. Just have to tighten up some bolts back here, but pretty much it's all tied in for the most part. So we're gonna go on this side now and we're going to install the Fortunato passenger side. So we're gonna start off by connecting the four top bolts here. So we're gonna drop this guy in. Hold it in place while I get up there. I'm holding it in place while I put these nuts on. Oh, actually, I forgot the washers. Gotta have washers. Can't forget those. So we got one on. 
Put the other side on. All right, cool. And now we'll put the rest of them on. Okay. And put this guy on. So I can go pretty far down with that one. Get these guys up, and then we're gonna push this side up so we can get the nut on them some more. All right, and I mean, we're pretty good. It's not all the way tightened or anything, but for the most part, it's up there. It's good to go. So we're gonna start on this bottom piece now. I'm gonna start by pushing the knuckle up and putting my screws in. Got my screws. Uh, which way do those screws go? Forget. I'm gonna put one in for now, or even both maybe, and then I'm gonna go check the other side. If I can get it in there. There we go. Perfect, got one in, and put the bottom one in. I think this is the way they go, but it might not be. Come on, you can do it. There we go, perfect. All right, so that side's in, but let's check and make sure we put the screws the right way. So yep, it's on the, towards the front of the car, the head of the bolt. And got it good, put the head of the bolt towards the front of the car. So now we're gonna get these two huge nuts. These are gonna be 21 mil nuts. Awesome. Now, now that we got the knuckle connected, we can go ahead and tie in this brake line back here. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna get this little bracket that holds it at the back. Um, you're going to reposition it in a way that you can actually get it on to the back hole here of the coilover. Alright, so we ended up fixing the brake line. We bent it a little bit. It was actually bent inwards for some reason. Um, so we ended up bending it back a little bit and now it is good to go and I'm able to pin it back there. So we're going to use... I actually had to buy these screws um, because the screws that were originally on the brake line to tie it back here to the coilover were too short. So. Gonna put the lock wash on and the washer. Put that washer on. And then we're gonna tie it back here. And I think I'm gonna go that way, yeah. I'm gonna put it that way. And we might have a little bit of an issue um, with this coilover hole being too small, even though we did tap this one as well. But we'll see. I don't think the tap suit the tap is gonna hold on this coilover either. It didn't hold on the last one just because the hole is so like thin on this part. Um, the metal and so it didn't really hold which is why we got the nut so we're good in any case um, put that nut on now coilovers um, it's not very far off from installing any other suspension it's just a lot of little things you need to look at and work on and things like the camber that we had to drill the shock tower for things like that that you just kind of have to watch out for and make sure you are grabbing so we're gonna get a 13 mil here and I think it's a 10 mil for the head. 13 mil for the nut. Sorry, I keep hitting the, the fender. It's just so close. Um, let's see here, 10 mil. Yep, the head's a 10 mil. And we got a 13 mil. Set to tighten. We're gonna tighten that bad boy up. All right, brake line is all secured. So now we're going to get that sway bar end link and we're going to match it to here. Um, so I have white line sway bars and I was going to use their end links but they ended up not working out. They were way too large because the original Coney, uh, I had Coney struts on here as you know, the original Coney uh, shocks, the mounting point for this was like way up here because it didn't have all these threads for the shock body because you couldn't adjust the ride height. But with this much lower mounting point you definitely need to use Fortunato's end links. So, I'm gonna put this guy on, I'm gonna tighten him up, and basically it's gonna be two 17 mils. Ask me how I know, I did the other side. 17 mils, a 17 mil socket, and we got a 17 mil wrench. And, oh, no, that's not where it goes. It goes over here, back here. It goes back here, there's a little nut back there that you can grab onto, and then you just tighten with this guy. And I'm gonna go over all these bolts after and make sure they're like 100% tight. Forget what these nuts are. We'll have to find that. But I am gonna contract this all the way. That way is the shortest length possible. 
Oh, this is a 13. Is it a 13? I believe it is a 14. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Nope, it's a 14. Cool. And we'll get that. We'll get another 14. Um, we'll hold this up here. And we're going to probably loosen this one up so it can contract properly. So I don't think it's contracting properly right now. So we're going to put a wrench up here. We're going to put a wrench down here. And we're going to tighten this guy up. That's good. Perfect. And then we'll tighten this guy up. At the top here. We do have all the bolts tightened up and ready to go. So this front one is good to go. It is ready to rock. And I am very, very excited to see what these feel like on the street. Now, all we gotta get to do is the rears. So basically what we're gonna do for that is we're gonna remove the old suspension here. We're gonna take the jack stands off of the axle so we can drop the axle by removing the sway bar end links and the shocks. And that is gonna drop the axle, allowing that spring to pop out. We're gonna put the new springs in there with the spring perch, adjust the ride height by the spring perch, and then install the shock accordingly to the ride height that we adjusted and drop the car, put it on its wheels and check out the ride height. And uh, after that, we'll be good to go and ready to start driving this thing in the mountains and the canyons and see what it feels like with the new coilovers. So we'll see you when that's all wrapped up and ready to go. So it's a few days later and I do have the Fortunatos all buttoned up and on the car front and rear. And my overall verdict of these coilovers is they're really good. They're really good at what they do. And so let's talk a little bit about what they do and why they're so good. So these are Fortunato 500s. This is their street track line of suspension. So it's really good for street use and track use at the same time. Now you guys might know this already, but this is a daily driver. I drive it every day. I want something that's gonna be comfortable on the street, but when I go to those back roads and those canyons, I wanna handle really well and I wanna be able to hit those corners really hard. So these are really good for daily driving. And then when you wanna go to the track day on the weekends, you can do that. It's going to be able to hit those corners hard and take the abuse just fine. Now, I did go with the Hyperco Springs on these Fortune Autos. I actually called Fortune Auto myself and I asked what they recommend and they recommended if you're gonna use these coilovers long-term and for the track use and things like that, you're gonna to wanna to go with the Hyperco Springs or the Swift Spring upgrade. So I did end up doing that and I love the Hyperco Springs. I went with the eight kilogram front and a five kilogram rear spring rate as recommended by Fortunato themselves. And I can say they're really good. Now on the S197 chassis, our shocks are known as McPherson shocks. They're not double wishbone, like let's say a Miata or anything like that. And these coilovers do have 24 clicks of damping control. So what that means is that compression and rebound are in the same damping control on the top of the coilover. And you're gonna be able to adjust how stiff or how soft you want these coilovers to be on that top knob on each individual coilover. So that's really cool. What I've gone and done is I set them all in the middle for right now. I just wanna see how the car reacts, something like that. And then as I own them over time, I'll probably go either stiffer or softer depending on if I'm daily driving the car or if I wanna hit those back roads on the weekend. So as you can see, the car is sitting super, super low now. And I love it. I think it looks amazing. I love that really low look. I wouldn't consider this slammed, but I would say it's pretty close to it. Now that comes with the drawbacks of the exhaust on this car, specifically Typically the mid pipe is sitting super low to the ground within inches, I would say. So I'm hoping to not have any problems there in the future, but the car handles, like I said, way better than before. The springs are a linear spring now, and I think I had some type of progressive spring before. It's a little hard to find information on the internet of my previous setup, but I love the linear spring rate. Uh, the car is very predictable on corners. As I pull it into a corner, I know exactly what it's gonna do and how much control and input to give it with the steering wheel. The car also has super minimal amounts of body roll. I would say it's very minimal. And I do like that too. I like a bit of a stiffer setup when I'm driving. And I would say with the new coilovers on smooth roads, it's a little bit smoother than the old setup is. But then when you hit some bumps in the road and things like that, it's a little bit stiffer. And really that's all you can say about these coilovers. Overall, I think it's a really good coilover. And if you're considering picking up a set of Fortunatos, do it. Don't even consider this or that or going with a different brand. Fortunato is an amazing brand to have on your car. 
and I'm proud to rock them on this car. So that's all I have to say about these coilovers, but if you're into Mustang mods and things like that, definitely check out my channel. I do a lot of videos on installations and mods and race days and things like that. Big autocross guy for right now, but I'll be moving into track use a little bit later on in this year or maybe early next year, so we'll get to that. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you learned anything about coilovers in this video, drop a like down below. And if you have any questions about them, drop a comment. I'll be sure to answer that. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.